Good morning, good morning, good morning. Oh, wash my hair again, look. Oh, it stays wet longer because it's about three feet long. I've got it in a massive great ponytail down the back. Dustman didn't come again yesterday. That's because we, uh, <laughs> we reported them because they broke our bin. And I think now they've decided that we're uh, on their list of people that are not going to get their stuff collected on a regular basis. So, oh, honestly, where does the time go? Got to be at work in 20 minutes. And it's a 20 minute drive. Lou told me yesterday, she says 8.45, 8.45. That's because I was five minutes late yesterday. I had the patient waiting outside. Fortunately, they're very, very nice, my patients. They even suggested a reason why I might have been late. I said no. I just lose track of time. Well, I don't lose track of time. What happens is I get up and then I realise I've got to polish my shoes and then I realise I haven't fed the goldfish and then before you know it, it's uh, mid-afternoon. How are you anyway? All right? Still doing well? Still thriving, are you? Still healthy? Still slaving over a hot dog? I did a brilliant rant on the National Health Service yesterday and forgot to turn the camera on. So unfortunately that's lost to the uh, dim and distant. Uh, <coughs> if you analyse the paint on the inside of the car you might be able to pick it up, but that's the future technology. So, what I was, uh, the gist of what I was saying was that uh, we're getting a lot of uh, different treatment coming in now. We're getting in uh, uh, very, very advanced uh, decay, uh, you know, so that almost every filling needs a root, root treatment and, uh, uh, and basically just, uh, you know, signs that uh, patients haven't had any treatment for a year. Not, not our patients, because uh, our patients are for the most part extremely fit and healthy at very low decay rates um, because we bombard them with information about the diet and very low um, uh, periodontal uh, disease rates because we uh, check their brushing every time they come in. But, uh, but new patients, um, to the point where, you know, I've said it before, I think that you could say that the, uh, the NHS has pretty much collapsed in East Kent where I am. Uh, the dentists are, the NHS dentists are struggling because of their clinical and financial model uh, it relies on them uh, getting getting stuff through quickly whereas the COVID model uh, uh, sort of requires that they're told that if they can't, you know, if they've done a filling they have to wait 15 minutes or 30 minutes or something um, and so they can't get patients through quickly. Uh, so these two conflicted then, you know, and, and paying them to do nothing, which is what the government did for about a year, is, was a solution, you know, if you don't care about the public finances. Um, but that solution is coming to an end now, you know, I think uh, they're going to get to the point now where the chief dental officer, I think, who recognised that if they didn't pay the NHS workforce, at a time when they couldn't make any money on the NHS, they were all they would all have gone into the private sector and, and caused irreparable damage because it's pretty much a one-way flow. Um, patients who go in, uh, dentists who go into the private sector and establish themselves, you know, and, and start to make money in the private sector, very rarely go back to the NHS by choice. Um, and so, this idea of paying them to do nothing was. Uh, was all right for one financial year, but I don't think you know when, when we when we racked up three hundred billion pounds worth of debt. <laughs> uh, um, but it's not it's not going to fly, is it? For as an ongoing scheme, unless you happen to be a proponent of uh, modern monetary theory, which, as we've said before, is not it's neither modern nor uh, a theory that's ever worked in practice whenever it's been tried. Um, so, yeah, so that's how the surgery's changed. I mean, we are, 
I don't know if you, you've been listening to these podcasts for a long time, you'll remember that in the early days I was complaining that we don't have enough patience. Now we've got more than enough patience to fill up a week, which is about as much as I want to fill up, you know. I, don't, I want to have some free appointments next week. In fact, I want to have a few free appointments this week. But uh, we're not, we are working on the basis of uh, the moment of emergencies this week, treatment next week. Uh, and I think they'll, it'll stay like that. All the um, old apple trees are coming out in blossom. It's jolly nice. And the peach trees. And the plum trees. And the pear trees. Uh, we used to have a nice Ceanothus at, uh, at uh, Angry Towers, and uh, this is this uh, really sort of bright, vivid, pur- bluey purple uh, plant, like a bush, and uh, it uh, used to blossom every year around about my birthday. So I was rather had an affection for it, but uh, it's not. Uh, one year it just got frost and it just completely split, the whole thing just split. Unbelievable it was. The water got into it and it just froze and, and it, every single bit of it was uh, split. Anyway. So, so you know, how have we got from having NHS everywhere to having NHS nowhere? And I think the answer is that uh, in, you know, when I qualified, you could get an NHS dentist anywhere, and uh, private dentists were resolved for, uh, reserved for people who just wanted to break down the golf club, how much money they'd paid for their teeth. And and then and then, what happened was that there was an attempt, because we were paid per filling try and cut down on the budget because it was too efficient I mean I mean basically too much dentistry was being done Um, and the allegation was that it was poor quality dentistry and I'm not saying that there wasn't some not negligible amount of poor dentistry being done but the problem was that uh, the vast majority of the work was was of a high quality we had a very good inspectorate the uh, dental reference officers or the regional dental officers as they were called and um, this uh, allegation that the uh, dentists were profiting by doing unnecessary work or uh, doing poor quality work was uh, was was disproved by the uh, Shan Chief report, I think, who said that uh, I think the conclusion of that report was that the um, the vast majority of dentists are doing you know good quality work on which the public can can continue to rely or something like that. But, um, you know, the Department of Health wouldn't let it go. They were like a terrier on a trouser leg. And they were constantly trying to uh, do things to try and reduce the budget, cut the budget, reduce the budget. And um, eventually that translated into a tendency for micromanagement and centralised control to the point of view where the uh, uh, Chief Dental Officer Cockcroft uh, wanted a system whereby every time anyone did a filling they uh, would claim for the filling using the the computer at work which by then we had computers and this would come up on their screen in Richmond House you know so you could see you could see what was being done what was being spent and paid for with um, public money but of course they never the system never got that granular but that attitude that um, that the dentists were no longer the custodians of the system and that uh, uh, it had to be centrally directed was the pernicious idea. And uh, and the problem with government is that uh, the more it interferes and the more it tries to micromanage, the worse things get. Because uh, you have to understand that uh, governments don't have any money. Uh, they, they get money through two ways. One is through taxation uh, and they then uh, so that they tax someone eight, eight, uh, £100 and then give him back £80 in benefits 
so it's inefficient. And then on the other way they do it, of course, is printing money, which these days is the primary way they get it. And that's uh, the effect of that is to debase the currency. So everybody who's got any wealth denominated in government currency basically loses loses its purchasing power to the extent that the new money is created and spent by the government every year. So, so as soon as the government became custodians of the of the dental service, but bearing in mind, okay, and, and again, so you need to know a bit of history. In 1948, when the National Health Service was set up, the uh, dent uh, doctors became employees. They were directly employed, and their surgeries were um, uh, purchased outright, and uh, they they were then working from government premises on a salary. The dentist, uh, the NHS took a different approach. They treated dentists as self-employed subcontractors and their, their surgeries weren't purchased. And uh, the uh, dentists remained effectively in the private sector, uh, free to do as much or as little NHS work as they liked. They were self-employed subcontractors. And because the, the terms uh, you know, were pretty good, to work on the NHS in that in those days, uh, the early NHS, the early dentists did a lot of NHS work, and so that's how they became known as uh, NHS dentists. You know, they they were all called NHS dentists, but they never were uh, salaried in the same way as doctors. They were, it was a completely different remuner remuneration model. So, as uh, terms and conditions worsened in the in the NHS. Um, dentists were free to move into the private sector and there was an inflection point at one one time when uh, it was very much in the balance what the government would do about this and what they could have done is they could have said to dentists look uh, you either work in the private sector or you work in the public sector but not both you know similar to what they do do a bit with the doctors although I don't even think doctors are forbidden from working in the private sector but basically, um, they could have knocked this move into private uh, sector on the head for a while, but just by saying that if you uh, if you uh, choose not to do uh, any NHS work, then or, or to do uh, private work, then you you won't get an NHS contract. Um, and that's pretty much where we are now. I mean, there's very very few NHS dentists uh, can obtain contracts in East Kent now. For example, you. I couldn't, I couldn't bring up and obtain an NHS contract, and, and certainly wouldn't want to, given the hoops I'd have to jump through to to lose money, effectively uh, treating treating their patients. <coughs> Excuse me. So, so you've got this micromanaged service now, and uh, unfortunately, the clamour for um, when anything is going badly in the public sector. The clamour is for more government involvement. They say that the uh, the problem is uh, uh, greedy dentists, I don't know, greedy technicians, greedy dental staff, uh, all trying to make money out of the NHS, our, our, our sacred, beloved NHS, God save the Queen. And, uh, and therefore, uh, more government control is called for. The government, the government should do something with a capital D and a capital S. And, and the problem is the government is doing something. The government is fucking it all up. That's why, that's why it's all going wrong. Uh, the answer is for the government not to do something. It's for do nothing. But, uh, but no, no, it's like, you know, greedy capitalists are always at the, the end of the problem. And so um, the, whole, the whole system staggers on, really, until uh, what happens is what has happened which is that uh, the uh, market forces have taken over. Uh, NHS managed centrally, micro-managed, centrally controlled, inefficient, ineffective service is now collapsed, uh, can, cannot provide treatment, uh, even despite the money that's going into it, it's, it's become stupid, inefficient. And um, um, practices that are sustainable and supportable and uh, uh, create a uh, profit based on uh, 
an agreement between the dentist and the patient as to what services are, are being provided and, and, to the, and the standard, etc., are, um, uh, are remain. You know, we stand because we stand. We operate within rules that the free market recognises and smiles on and uh, encourages, to the exclusion of all others. To be honest. I mean, I must say, I've had to wait 30 years. <laughs> Every year I said the NHS can't carry on like this, can't carry on like this. And of course it has carried on, because as it's paid less and less, uh, there's always a cadre of dentists who, are, who say, uh, I don't care what you pay per filling. Just tell me what you want to pay, and I will do you a filling uh, for less than that, which allows me to make a profit. But there comes a point, or there should come a point, although it hasn't come for, as I say, for a long time, where you can't say, you know, if you're losing, if you're losing money on every sale, you can't make it up with volume. And that's what the NHS has always done. You know, they've made a very small profit on every sale and made it up with volume. And when you can no longer make it up with volume, then large numbers of patients get rejected because they're non, they're no longer profitable. Um, and I think it's it's gone, you know. I think in the NHS it's gone past that. I think it's NHS patients now who are still receiving NHS treatment are doing so on the basis that they are they're paying with their teeth. That's what's that's what's taken up the slack. Their, their state of their oral health is what's paying for the uh, <clears throat> the gap between the free market uh, sustainable fees and uh, what the NHS is prepared to pay. And by that I mean that you know they are they need six fillings and the system is uh, to make the system work. The dentist can only do one because he's paid the same amount of money for one as he is for six so why would he do six and then when the patient comes back six months later the dentist miraculously finds another one of the six and does it and gets paid again and then and then and so on and so forth you know and this system can survive because the inspection and testing system has been effectively neutered you know, the General Dental Council never really got got into uh, dentistry to that extent. They're just more interested in in trying to strike off dentists who, uh, because the patients have uh, complained that they had a root treatment and the root treatment failed, uh, so they they then will then you know do their best to strike that dentist off. Um, the Care Quality Commission is a failed institution which. Uh, really just looks at paperwork and and says uh, we we want to check like 300 certificates and 300 uh, policies Uh, and um, when you say well I haven't got 300 policies they say to you well don't worry you get on our website and you'll soon and we'll give you 300 you know we'll tell you 300 to, to have ready for us and then we'll come and check them but they don't check the quality of the clinical work or anything. Um, so, <clears throat> so the inspection and testing is completely misdirected, and the uh, clinical supervision and surveillance, which was the the, the RDOs and the DROs, now is. I mean, it, it actually got replaced eventually with a statistical. Uh, Surveillance, so that uh, in the past they had uh, statistical uh, triggers, and then what would happen is a lot of people would they, they would get uh, clinically checked, and then other people would just get clinically checked at random anyway to make sure that their fillings were, were, were of a good standard. Now, um, basically, they you can get picked up statistically, um, but really there's no day-to-day clinical surveillance and uh, personally my personal opinion is that that's deliberate I don't think they want I think they know very well what's going on 
within NHS dentistry and they do not want a load of uh, clinical zealots to go in and tell them what a bunch of crap uh, is, uh, is coming out of their system, you know, by any measure. And they don't measure it, they don't, there's no service level agreement on the NHS other than you will be able to say that you've got an NHS dentist, uh, you know, for whatever that means. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so, and the, and the end result, of course, is that um, the Department of Health got what, what it wanted. Why are you advertising? You're going left if you're going round the roundabout. Oh. You know, they wanted to reduce the budget, didn't they? Right from the days of um, fee for item. They're always like, oh, can we can we spend less on the dental budget? They, you know, based on the these, these 50s and 60s stereotypes of dentists, the Tom Mangold drilling for gold type uh, stereotypes uh, persisted into the 70s and the 80s, and there was always this conviction, uh, a top level, departmental level, that, uh, that there that there was rich pickings in the dental budget to be said, because dentists all earn a fortune, you know. And it was reinforced by the fact that uh, dentists who were younger tended to work harder and therefore had, had massive stonking great salaries of 70, 80,000 pounds a year out of university. And then they completely ignored the, the fact that it was a bit like professional footballers. They earn a lot when they're young, but then when they're 50 and 60, they haven't got the energy to put into working those hours. And, and we're working perhaps more in the private sector and not doing much NHS and so, um, and so they, those dentists weren't earning so much in uh, uh, on the National Health Service. So what happened was that they, you know, this persistent push to save money um, <clears throat> really killed it. It was really killed. And then, and then, but the most, uh, you know, the ironic thing is, for the last year during COVID, they've been spending money hand over fist. <laughs> They've been paying dentists to do nothing. They've, they've literally, all their principles of uh, trying to screw the lid on the dental budget every year by a few tens of millions of quid, that has caused so many dentists to leave the NHS and so much rubbish work to be done. Uh, <coughs> they've, they've finally had to uh, uh, <coughs> temporarily call, call a truce and just say to the NHS dentists, look, you can pretty much have what you want as long as you stay, as long as you stay on the NHS, please, if that's all right with you. <laughs> so I'll be interested to see how it all works out. Oh, there's my first patient. She looks dead pleased. Oh, I'll have to go and chat her up. Right, nice to talk to you. Talk to you soon, bye.